So I welcome you uh, to this session on expectations today. My name is Sherry Forsyth and I'm a life coach uh, from South Africa. And I would like to just put a few things out there that might help you ponder a little bit about how you're living your life. Um, so what we're going to be speaking today about is how our expectations can affect our happiness. And um, do I live my life according to my expectations or maybe the expectations of other people? Uh, and then also what the difference is between having expectations and having hope. So I dedicate this uh, talk this morning to my late friend, Ilona Dobbin, who in my early 20s introduced me to the whole concept of expectations and uh, I've been pondering it ever since. So um, expectations can affect many areas of our lives and we're not speaking today about the concrete practical expectations like what happens when I drop a plate, I can expect that the plate will shatter. Uh, I'm speaking more about expectations of ourselves and others and our behaviors and our goals and what we're wanting to achieve. Um, and the first point I want to make is that generally if we have high expectations of ourselves, we also are likely to have high expectations of others. And often that leads us to huge disappointment because they won't live up to what we think they should be doing. Uh, and in the conversation uh, that I had with Ilona Dobbin made me realize that actually we have no right to expect anything of anybody else. Okay, we have no right to expect anything from anybody else. Um, very important that. Uh, according to William Shakespeare, expectation is the root of all heartache. And I think that that quote is very valid, uh, particularly when we are looking at um, having high expectations of ourselves and others and being our heart being broken or, yeah, broken with disappointment that over and over again, people aren't doing what we thought that they would do. So um, we need our expectations to be quite realistic. Are they usually? Do they motivate us? Do they help create hope in us? Or do they lead to our disappointment and our heartbreak? So if expectations are too high, generally what's going to happen is we're going to be disappointed in ourselves and or others. If our expectations are too low, on the other hand, we don't think we can do anything. We don't feel we are worth anything. Um, so it's a very disempowering place to be. So what we are aiming at is for our expectations to empower us is to make sure that they are realistically challenging. Okay, realistically challenging. But most of us don't even know where our expectations come from. They just seem to be there. So they do, where they come from is our past experience, our childhood, our parents, our schools, our friends. Um, all of those will contribute to us expecting certain things. However, a lot of those expectations are not really conscious. We're not really thinking about them. We just know that we are left with a feeling of disappointment because we thought something else was going to happen. So those are living our lives is what creates our expectations. That's within ourselves. But what about others' expectations of us? Well, patently, they would be uh, their expectations come from their own life experience, schools, families, etc., etc., etc. But also added to this is the social expectations. You know, so it might be the expectation that for you to be accepted into our little world, you have to be driving uh, white Mercedes-Benz uh, sports, for example. 
then you will be considered to be part of the crowd. But if you're just driving a to, to Camry, maybe you won't be accepted. So um, those kind of societal pressures are very, um, they're very shallow and they usually don't have a lot of merit. However, they, they affect people hugely. Uh, if we feel we are not living up to the expectations of the of the society in which we surround ourselves, we'll feel like we're failures, we'll feel like we're not good enough. And there we go into Shakespeare's whole idea of expectations being heartbreak. Um, so we need to, in order to be uniquely and powerfully us, what do we need to do? Okay. Um, we need firstly to be quite realistic in uh, what we are wanting. We also need to be aware of where our expectations, what they are and where they come from. And um, according to the New Insights Coaching Program, um, the way we can find out what our expectations are is if we look at the rules that we have for feeling certain values. So if I want to find out what my expectations are of my husband, then what I need to do is look and see what are my rules for feeling loved. So I will, um, uh, I need from my background, for example, um, uh, that Mike does a whole lot of things for me. For example, he might have to SMS me five times a day. He might have to uh, tell me he loves me um, every day, uh, send me flowers once a week, uh, going away for a weekend every month and two overseas hol holidays a year. I would not even know that those are my rules unless I become aware of them. And are those, those rules, which actually are my expectations, are they setting me up for success or failure? And it's patently failure. No man is going to do that. So our rules that we have are actually our expectations. And so the question we need to ask to find out what our expectations are is what has to happen in order for me to feel loved by my husband? Okay, that is the question. What has to happen in order for me to feel loved by my husband? Okay, and then your expectations naturally will uh, reveal themselves as the rules that we have. So that is how you can identify what your expectations are. And then the next step would be to see, are they realistic or are they not realistic? Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to just touch on a few different aspects of uh, expectations, which is a huge topic, but there are just a few things uh, I want to speak about. Uh, the fact that expectations can complicate our lives. Um, so the quote that I want to read is, simple things become complicated when we expect too much. So we can complicate our lives by all sorts of excessive demands that actually are not realistic, uh, and they're not going to um, add to our happiness. Uh, <clears throat> so let's have a look at Paul Kilo, the author's uh, quote here. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but none about his or her own. So here we are talking about the expectations of other people on us, okay? When other people are expecting certain things of us, they are living in judgment of us, and that's not a good thing. What gives anyone the right to judge how we are living our lives, what decisions we are making? They haven't walked in our shoes. So we need to be aware of the fact that expectations are linked with judgment, and judgment very rarely leads to happiness. Uh, the next quote I'd like to read is from Dr. Dr. Steve Maraboli. Expectation feeds frustration. It's an unhealthy attachment to people, things, and outcomes we wish we could control, but we can't. Okay, so, so far, expectations and happiness 
has got a bit of a bad rap. Most of the time, it leads to dissatisfaction and unhappiness. Um, so let's put a little bit of positivity here. What is the difference between hope and expectations? And various people have different ideas uh, on, uh, on, on what this is. Um, the person that I like, uh, the, the theory about it, um, is Dr. Gerald May in his book, The Awakened Heart. And what he's saying is expectations are unrealistic beliefs of our abilities. They are very demanding. They are very inflexible. They are fixed. They are frozen. They are tight. They are basically pressurizing. Putting in, they're basically very pressurizing. They can overwhelm us. Um, like the previous conflict makes things. Uh, I mean, the the fact that that uh, uh, expectations can make life very complicated. That's exactly what what he is saying. But in addition to complication, he's also saying that they are very pressurizing and very rigid. Hope, on the other hand, is interesting. Because it also means we are looking into the future and we are expecting something or are we just hoping for it? So the difference is that hope is a wish, whereas expectations are a demand. And if our expectations are unmet, we are left feeling very unhappy and we're feeling like we're failures. However, when a wish is unfulfilled, we can maybe tweak that wish and wish for something else. We don't feel a failure because we haven't been expecting that. So hope is very flexible. It's very alive. It's able to be moved and changed. Um, it's linked to reality, whereas expectations very often aren't. And so hope actually allows us to grow. It gives positivity in a place where we otherwise might be in a very dark place. So it's a very positive, light, changeable kind of emotion. So hope gives us life, whereas expectations give us pressure. I think that's how I would like to how I would like to sum it up. Um, so if you have any comments about what I'm saying, I would appreciate you to um, add it into the comments box below. Um, and uh, like I always ask you to please, if you find this video thought provoking and you think it could maybe help somebody to share it, share it on your page. Uh, we're trying to get our word out there loud and clear. <clears throat> so there's also um, uh, a saying um, that we should expect the worst and maybe the best will happen okay so if we expect the worst and the best does happen what a pleasure that will be uh, the other way to look at that is also to expect nothing but appreciate everything so here we are linking expectations with living your life in gratitude um, so every tiny little thing that happens instead of us expecting it to have been more we're happy with the less than. We're happy with the realistic thing that happened. Um, so if we allow expectations to rule our lives, we are never going to feel complete. I'm talking about unrealistic expectations. We're never going to feel complete because we'll never get there. We can't enjoy the moment because we're expecting something different or something else. Um, we often are not sure what we're waiting for, but we're waiting for something. So we will feel very dissatisfied in our life. Um, and so Mandy Hale says the, op the opposite to that is that when you release expectations, you are free to enjoy things for what they are instead of what you think they should be. So in other words, we're coming back to living in the present, living life in gratitude, and appreciating uh, what we have. So what is my challenge for you today? Uh, the third challenge in the series of Uniquely and Powerfully You 
is to challenge ourselves in a very real way. Not to expect success, but maybe to expect a learning. Uh, not to expect perfection, but maybe just expect growth. Um, when we expect things, it seems as if we don't really have a choice. In other words, those expectations are just foisted on us and we have to live up to them. So what I'm saying is, I want you to choose. Choose your goals. Choose the direction you're going in. Choose to live in the present. Choose gratitude. Choose to be very realistic in the demands that you're placing upon yourself. And certainly, we're not going to place our expectations on anybody else. We know that now. So how liberating would that be? That we can be living a life that we are wanting instead of what we are feeling we have to be living. So the minute in our lives we hear the word, even if it's in our mind chatter, saying we should do X, Y, and Z, know that that's likely to be someone else's expectation or maybe our own unrealistic expectation. So instead of the I should, what I would like our mind chat to reflect is I want to or I would like to. And that immediately indicates that we have chosen where we are going. And if we choose what we are doing, we're empowered and that leads us to feel that we're in control of our lives and that leads to additional happiness. So thank you once again for joining me this morning. And uh, I always welcome your comments. If you want to contact me at uh, Sherry Forsyth, C-H-E-R-R-I-F-O-R-S-Y-T-H at gmail.com with any comments, any suggestions, any ideas, I will always gladly welcome them. So have a good week further. Bye.